was a devastating cyclone in 1991. After cyclone, people got a lot of relief. So people had a relief mentality. Everybody was looking that the ICDDRB is an international organization. It has come. It will give us relief. It will give us um, drug free. It will give us medical service free. So they, they had a relief mentality. In one of the poorest areas of one of the world's poorest countries, the disaster led to a huge aid response. Relief and malnutrition continue to this day. The mod, moderate, moderate malnutrition is 14. Out of total 81 children registered, so 14 out of 75 is malnourished. If the problems of healthcare were going to be solved long term, then something new had to happen. Thoughts on health for all had been worked out at the UN Alma-Ata conference a couple of decades earlier. Alma-Ata is, is terribly significant. 1978, um, 150 countries or whatever it was got together and said that we need to develop a model of primary health care which delivers generalist services locally, which uses appropriate technology, appropriate labour force models, very importantly which involves local communities in thinking about the problems they're facing. Primary health care, which came in Alma-Ata, where community participation is said to be one of the pillars, but since the project started, there was not very good example where community participation has been proved to be a very successful tool. It was and it still is a great idea, but I think there's a difference between expecting communities to all on their own pay for those services as opposed to actually get, getting involved with government systems and trying to actually improve the quality of that. What was needed was a scheme that at least demonstrated a community participation approach, something with the potential to reach the vast numbers of rural poor. If the government of Bangladesh couldn't do it, then a non-governmental organization was going to try. Here in Chakaria was a chance to try out a new way of doing things. It wasn't the easiest of places to experiment with health care. First off, the International Centre of Diarrheal Disease Research, the NGO that wanted to set new healthcare precedents, had to measure what was there. <laughs> Moazim Hussein, a community physician, was charged with setting up the project. In the beginning, actually, we just used to come and sit in the tea shops and uh, see in the different uh, places where people gather. And people used to ask, uh, where are the people, uh, where from you are coming? I mean, why do you come here? So initially it was responding to their queries rather than telling what we want to do. The district of Chakaria had a pretty poor record. Most children, 60%, were sick during any two-week period. Most were malnourished. Less than half were immunized against measles. There was little family planning. There was high infant and maternal mortality. Diarrhea was common. Dispensing medicine with unsterile needles was widespread. Few knew about food or water hygiene. Most didn't know the causes of iodine deficiency or night blindness. There was rickets and endemic malaria. People suffered vitamin deficiency and that left them prone to disease. But collecting all this information was not easy. Chakaria is very conservative and puritanical. The inrush of aid after the cyclone caused resentment as well as dependency. This is a Muslim dominated area. Clerics were deeply suspicious about a project that talked of community control, modern medicine, and female involvement. This area was very conservative and a fanatic, and the people has a mistrust about the NGOs. So they did not believe the health activities of the ICDDRB. In the beginning, they, they, they were clearly used to tell about the history, history, story of East India Company. And they used to say, oh, well, we, we have seen East India Company coming this, to this country for trades, and then they have taken over, take over the country. So we don't believe NGOs. I mean, these are the agents of the foreign, foreigners and uh, the donor agencies. So we, we had to tell them and we had to convince them that, I mean, we, we are here to talk to you and to listen to you and to know from you your health situations. And then if anything in this project or in this area to be done, it's, it's you who will be doing it. There were community leaders who knew something had to be done. People are not conscious about health issues. 
There was no system for sanitation. Wherever you went, there was diarrhea. One of the very first things was health awareness. Villagers got to understand the causes of diarrhea. They found they could buy latrine parts for about $3. 300 villagers subscribed and saved nearly $850. 300 latrines were ordered and overnight public defecation disappeared and the instance of diarrhea decreased. The next stage was to find somewhere else where community involvement might be fostered. Elders in Mukhurepara, about 60% Muslim and 40% Hindu, understood the need for local initiative. Then we took initiative to gradually develop ways to tackle the health problems we have. It would be better for the village to do things by ourselves. This land is my parents' land. It has been given definitely for free use. And then we decided to have a building there. And then one of my cousins, Basirullah, gave 50 to 60,000 taka. In 1998, the first of five health posts was built and paramedics went to be trained. ICDDRV gave me community paramedic training from February 1998 to June. I trained as a midwife at Gonoshasto in Dhaka. With help only to buy stethoscopes and medicines, a mechanism had to be worked out to pay paramedics and doctors. It's complicated. If she gets this health card for the 50 taka, all the members of her family can be listed on the card and they all can get treatment here. That would include a in community paramedic, primary treatment for 5 taka and the session day. The BSP session day, when they can see the main doctors, they have to deposit 15 taka to get the treatment. If they told us to come and get this card, we would have done. Everyone in this poor place. You don't understand the importance? What are you talking about? Not giving you importance? How can they treat you without a card? For money? How much did you pay? 55 taka. There's no point going if the medicine doesn't work. After one year of the activity, they found that only the rich people are coming and buying their health card at the cost of Taka 50. They identified the poor and the poor must be addressed. So they made a list of the poor, poor families of this area and they in the annual planning workshop, they have decided that they will give the poor families health card at the rate of taka 10. For the card, it's 50 taka. It's expensive. How can we afford it? What shall I do? Pay for the children's medicine? Or pay for the card? Or buy food to feed ourselves? And this is why we didn't get the card. We've told them so often, but they still claim not to know anything. Someone got treatment without a card for free and got the medicine and didn't pay for the medicine. And then, when we came to collect the money, they said, my illness didn't get better, why should I pay? Some people are thinking that I am not ill, or somebody of my family is not ill. When I shall get ill, then I shall buy the family health card. The concept of saving for health is an alien idea, even in such a disaster-prone area as Bangladesh. Traditionally, 90% of the rural poor pay local and untrained quacks when they need health care. Suddenly having to pay large sums in an emergency can be devastating to a family. What kind of medicine does he give? For fever and malaria, he gives medicine for everything. How much do you have to pay? A lot of money, 100 to 200 taka, 50 taka. It depends how ill you are. Almas, mother of four sons, has malaria. My whole body shivers, fever. I get palpitations of the heart. I feel really dizzy, and I've got really bad pain in my stomach. Heart palpitations, stomach pain. How do you know you have malaria? From malaria, my whole body shivers. Did you go to the doctor? No. Why? Haven't got money. How can I go without money? Living up in the hills almost doesn't know about the health post. 
Neither does her friend Sakina, whose baby isn't well. She's only seen the local quack. When did you last see the doctor? It's been about 10 to 12 weeks. How old is the baby? One year. There are doctors here. Do you go? I have no money, sister. There will be no benefit, they said. They say he will get better. When told about the health post, both mothers would set out next day to walk the five kilometers to see the doctor. The Chikaria Community Health Project isn't supposed to be an alternative to government health care. Right from the start, Mozim worked with the nearest hospital and with other community organizations. Health awareness was top priority. People believed that the reason for night blindness is if you kick the chicken's cage, because the chicken, they don't see well at night. So if you kick that, then you'll also suffer from the night blindness. So that was uh, in a time when there was extensive vitamin A, uh, I mean, uh, vitamin A campaign uh, in, in the country. That was the knowledge level here. There still are difficulties of understanding. Women, not least those in polygamous marriages, still find going out in public intimidating. Husbands have to be there to guard their honor. Women in this area, they are very much neglected. They are poor and also they have many children. They cannot take proper um, health care for themselves. As the health scheme grew, the villagers of Muhurepara realized all the health organizers were male and all the health volunteers were female. At one particular meeting, both sexes attended. It was the very first time women had ever been to a public meeting. <laughs> Ladies couldn't even talk to ladies. It was very difficult. We had to make them understand. And after getting the female volunteers and setting up the intercluster meeting, it's now changing. Where women used to be invisible, there are now public seminars. Hasina holds one in her house. The project found that the female health is neglected. So they selected some female health volunteers. They were trained about the female health, what are the female uh, health problems, what are the complications of the pregnancy, what to do when a complication arises. <laughs> Many pregnant mother and babies die from delivery, and especially they died from the diarrhea, malaria and pneumonia. Mostly they died from delivery, problems in delivery, and the bleeding before delivery and the bleeding afterwards. Mothers didn't know about checkups or where to go for the treatment they need. Ainun returns to a baby she delivered three days ago. Cutting umbilical cords used to be done with bamboo splints, but messages are getting through. Men have become more sensitive to responding to the woman needs. Women have become much more free, courageous, and talking very boldly with their men and with the men from outside. So this is a smooth transition, I feel, and that was a dream, I mean, I would say, in this project. The 
Chikaria Health Project now has seven health posts and is setting up 17 mini posts in the isolated hamlets. The number of families buying into the scheme is rising and the annual fee has been reduced. Immunization has increased, there's less diarrhea and health awareness is dramatically improved. But without running water, villagers have to risk waterborne diseases caught from ponds. Skin infections, dysentery and malaria all result from the numerous ponds, streams and ditches. Iodine, antibiotics and impregnated bed nets are all being used, but standing water will always breed malaria-carrying mosquitoes, and malaria can cause major economic crises. Zilla once raised nearly 2,000 taka, about $35, from his villagers to save the life of a pregnant mother who had malaria and who had been rejected by her husband. After hospitalization and recovery, Zilla was able to bring her back home. So there's now a poor fund, saved for emergency cases, but it's not likely to cover the many who have no money. You have been ill for two years. You are so close. Why can't the doctor come and see you? I can't pay. I have no money. So if you have no money, you can't see the doctor? No. How do you manage? Everyone help us. And we live like this. What's wrong? Asthma. How long have you been suffering? About a year. One year? Yes. When did you see the doctor? And what other treatment are you having? Oh, no, I haven't seen anybody. Wednesday. Doctor's surgery day and antenatal clinic. After seven years, health and attitudes have improved, even if income levels haven't. As a doctor, I have a social commitment. I wanted to do something for the society. Here I found that the health is addressed totally, not a part of the problem. All the problems of the health is addressed from the developmental health, the preventive health, curative health. Everything is addressed properly. So, and, and the people's participation and the self-health is, activities are going on nicely. So I like the jo job and I am here and uh, hope I shall be here. Zilla shows Almas into the surgery. She's made the five-kilometer journey, and she's come with her friend, Sakina. They are living in a hilly area. Clinically, she's suffering from malaria. At the same time, she is a smoker and she is having uh, some bronchitis and so for the, both the reasons she has fever. I am giving her anti-malarial drug, at the same time I am giving one antibiotic for bronchitis also. Sukina's son, Shahidula, can't hear, can't cry, and can't hold himself up. He's 12 months old. I think this baby has cerebral palsy. His prognosis is not good. Hold him in your arm. Everything he eats, he vomits it out. He doesn't go to the toilet. With cerebral palsy, Shahidullah is always going to be disabled. 
Sukina faces endless trips to Chittagong Hospital. It's over an hour each way by bus and costs a lot more than she has. I'm poor. How can I go to the hospital? I know what you mean, but there's nothing else we can do. Will it make him get strong? Yes, and make sure you give him this medicine. Yes. Look, there is no doubt that there is a huge scope for building more effectively on the creativity and initiative of local communities. But uh, when uh, women have an obstructed labour, um, we need to have proper operating <laughs> facilities with proper, uh, with all the proper mod cons of, of, your, of your technical hospital. If everybody's very poor, then there's a limit to the amount of, of service provision that can come from that. Uh, so it's, it, it is a model that can be scaled up, but it's, it's really you know, an approach that governments should look at. You really need a lot of input, a lot of financial input to make that happen at, at a population level.